you have been very steadfast uh, together with the late Bob Collimo. You sang with him uh, in, in that particular song where you are doing the Furi Furi dance. Uh, how are you this morning and why are we smiling this morning? I'm smiling because, because he had a good life and because he lived the life that he wanted to live. And, you know, we will cry, we will have our moments, but ultimately I think the best thing we can have is a chance to truly live. And I think he did that. Yeah, I think he gave back, I think he did good. So somewhere up there, when the scales are balanced, I'm sure he did more good than anything else. And so I, I'm happy for him. At that time when you were going into this particular video, because it's what people now remember, uh, th these are the videos that we, we, we keep seeing on television all the time, uh, did you think, what are we doing? Are we doing, is it okay? Because we've not seen people of such caliber, CEOs of companies doing things that the ordinary Kenyan will be doing. Uh, were you having second thoughts or when he said, ah, let's do this? Okay. Do you mean the Furi Furi dance yes, video? The video? So actually Jimmy Gates approached us all individually and so reached out I think to, to Bob, to, to Jeff uh, and, and I and we all agreed separately so we didn't have a conversation about yeah. it and when we met there and did the dancing and, and the singing and the whole video we had a ball and I think that's what he was about. He wasn't about overthinking things, he was a strategic leader but sometimes when things needed to move fast and he needed to make a decision he wasn't shy to stand up and say yeah, let's do that. And that's what, what I mean when I say truly live. Because sometimes as humans, we tend to procrastinate, think too much about things, push things aside that maybe we should have done and we should have experienced. You know, he walked in parts of Nairobi that I think some CEOs never experienced, you know, sat with people who some people would never think about sitting with, talking to, becoming good friends with. And, and that's a brilliant and a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Julie Gishuru. So do you. enjoy yourself this particular I don't know if morning. We can enjoy I think, because I think it's a tough one, but mm -hmm. but in honor of him, we carry a message. I think a message of positivity and a message that if we can all stand up and do something, something good. If we can be bold and brave, maybe we take something from his life. For for doing the right thing, and you know when I said to this Bob, he really laughed, and he says probably the young lady is right, but the question is, do we continue doing what we need to do, or we just? give in to uh, the, you know, the manipulation of the social media. And of course, he laughed over it. He said, ah, come on, let's, go on, let's get on with our work and do our work and continue doing our work. So for me, you know, he leaves a huge, huge legacy. He leaves a lot of challenge for us. I think his dear wife and Wamboy and, and her children and their children is what we really need to, to, to look after, pray for them, for their well-being and for their good health. But I think for the Safaricom fraternity, Safaricom as a company, even before uh, Bob with Michael and the rest of the team have been a true supporter of the Red Cross and the humanitarian work for this country. So I really want to pass my condolences, one to the family, but also to the bigger Safaricom family, but also to ordinary Kenyans who loved and cherished and respected and understood who Bob was. Uh, only having been nine years in this country, having become a citizen of this country, but larger than life, that for me he was a true hero. and. Um, I can only pray for Lord Almighty uh, to keep his soul in eternal peace until we meet again uh, the hereafter.